and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is AP Calculus. We are talking, uh, working from the calculus book by Finney, Demana Waits Kennedy, the third edition. And we are uh, well into uh, working with applications of derivatives. And we have been talking about linearization. Uh, we worked on Newton's method in class. And we've talked just a very tiny bit about differentials. And so I want to just remind you what differentials are. And then uh, we're going to work then from uh, that into applications of differentials. So just uh, so uh, df, or if you prefer uh, dy, is a differential. Uh, it's basically a very small version of change in y or delta y. And what we typically do with this in calculus is we uh, normally start with a derivative, and if we want dy, then we multiply that derivative by some change in x, and that gets us dy. And honestly, that is really the whole thing with, uh, with differentials. Now, of course, that's a complete oversimplification because there's a lot of work involved, but uh, I just want to draw a little distinction here. Uh, if you were going to talk about the actual change, the true change uh, between y values, you would subtract the y values. And this is y1 minus y2. Uh, and so the idea is that this is the y value at a specific x. And this is a y value at an x nearby. Okay, And your book actually will put an a there. And I meant to, but I biffed. So, and so the idea here is this is the true absolute change, the actual change uh, in y. We estimate that by working with the differential, and that's what I was just alluding to a second ago. So if I do dy dx times dx, notation-wise, uh, it looks like what we're left with is dy or df. And in essence, that is what happens. It's a little more complicated than that, but that, that's what happens. So we're going to use this as an actual change in the y values. Okay. Now, that is an estimated version in, of the change in y. Okay. And that, so I'm just kind of giving you a little background here. Relative change it has to do with, like, compared to the overall. So just, uh, for instance, um, I'm just going to take this idea down here for just a second. Uh, let's say I have an area, uh, in initially, that area is 100 square centimeters. If I know that I have a change in area, or the area increased, let's say, 10 centimeters, uh, square centimeters, then the question is, what, what's the relative change? How does it compare to the original? Well, and what you would do is take the 10 square centimeters over the 100 square centimeters, and say, well, that was an increase of 0.1 relatively. It, it was one-tenth of its original. And so the idea is you, you put that change in whatever you're talking about over whatever the original was. Okay? And that's what this is. Okay? So the same idea is true if we were doing approximation. We take whatever that change is, and we put it over the original. Okay, so this is the change over the original. And then there's just one other variation of that, and, and that's the idea of percent change, which is really no big shocker. Um, you just multiply by 100% to convert, it, convert the decimal or whatever it is to a percent. So, for instance, this guy would be one-tenth times 100%, so 10%. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time worrying about converting from a decimal to a percent. Hello, this is calculus. <coughs> okay. All right, so let's put this to work because this is, you know, meaningless until we actually do something with it. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is estimate the change in area of a circle when the radius changes from 5 centimeters to 5.1 centimeters. Okay, so the key word here being estimate, so that wh what we're going to use is a differential. Okay, so we want to find the change in area. Okay, now about this time, you're going to have to let go of y's and x's a little bit here because area of a circle, shockingly enough, uh, is typically written pi r squared, uh, a equals pi r squared. And so we're not going to be using uh, 
y's and x's in this case. I mean, yeah, I guess officially you could change it, but why would you? You're just going to just, just let it go. Nobody does. Okay. okay, so we want the change in area. Well, that is dA. Okay. We want the, to estimate the change in the area. Okay, so here's, here's how this goes. We start with the a equals pi r squared, and we're going to do the derivative. Okay, so we're going to do the derivative with respect to r. Now, this is where this notation becomes very helpful. You really don't want to write a prime. Okay, and so we're going to do derivative. So 2 times pi and times r to the 1. Now, remember, pi is a constant. It's a number, so, so this is 3.14 times, you know, etc. So, so you don't need to do a product rule here. We're just doing a power rule just like normal. Okay. Now, back to what we are, our goal is. I really want dA. Okay. So that I'm going to solve this for dA. I'm going to multiply both sides by dR. That goes away. So dA equals 2 pi r dR. Okay. Now, my goal is to find change in area. Well, I solved for it. Now I just need to plug in some stuff. So change in area equals 2 pi. Well, the radius started at 5. And dr is the change in area. And we are told that it goes from 5 to 5.1. So this is just 0.1. And so this becomes um, 10 pi times 0.1, so it's pi square centimeters. So the actual change in area was pi square centimeters. It's pretty cool. I didn't expect it to come out quite that nice, but that was awesome. Okay, I don't know if you can still see that, but there it is. Okay, now let's let's adjust that just a smidge. Okay, um, I would also like to know the percent change. Okay, so percent change is based on relative change. So that's how I'm going to start. I, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to write the whole percent change formula. That, uh, remember, it's, uh, it'd be like df over f times 100%. You're not going to see me do that. Okay, What I'll do is just do df over f, and then I'll just change it to a percent. Okay, So in this case, what we're going to do, since we're talking about area, it's da over A. Now, we already know most everything here. Uh, first of all, we know uh, I'm going to grab this from here. So dA is 2 pi r dr. Now, I could just use the number uh, that I have already, uh, which is pi. So I guess I'll just go ahead and fill that in. It's just a lot of times when we're doing this, we don't know that number yet because they ask us directly for the percent. A, area, is pi r squared. Now, I haven't actually figured that answer out yet. Remember, the original, area, the original radius was 5, so this will be pi times uh, 5 squared. I'll, I'll go ahead and write it as 5 squared just so everybody sees where it comes from. So this becomes pi over 25 pi. The pi's divide out. Okay. And so we're left with 1 over 25. Uh, probably also worth noting that this would have been square centimeters and this would have been square centimeters. Since we're relating them, they, can't, they cancel out also. So this is 0 0.04. So in other words, we had a 4% increase. And so that was the percent change. Okay. So again, the idea here is, I mean, I know that just all happened so fast, didn't it? dA over A is what we wanted. That's a relative change. And then we just converted it to a percent. So dA over A. And then we're there. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do another one. Okay. So here's a little more interesting problem. I mean, it's the same idea. Uh, it says, what's the percent error allowed in measuring the radius of a sphere? So we're going to talk about, we want to measure the radius of a sphere if the volume of that sphere must be within 5% of its actual volume. Okay. 
So the idea is that we're going to measure a sphere, or and and so we can calculate its volume. But we need to talk about how what kind of precision we need. Okay. Well, in order to do this, you need to know the volume of a sphere. Uh, volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. Okay. And uh, th this is something that honestly by now you really should know, but uh, it, this is uh, vague, clo vaguely close to real life, so uh, uh, typically that formula is supplied. Okay, so on some kind of a formula sheet or in in the problem or something like that. Okay, all right. So here's the idea. We're going to talk about dv dr. We know that the volume must be within. Now, within five percent. This is a relative term as a percent. So dvdr is that. So what we're saying is dvdr is 5%. Okay, and and I, I know this, this kind of terminology, this kind of equate, uh, uh, equating of ideas is, is new, but you'll, you'll get used to this the more you see this. Okay, So this is a relative term percentage, uh, so so the idea here is, again, dvdr is the 5% because we, that we have to have the volume measured within that. Now, since what we want to know is uh, the percent of error for the radius, we need to basically find out dr over r. This is, again, a relative term. So that, that's my goal. So ultimately, I need something that says dr over r. Okay, well, let's just start by working with what we already know. We already know that this is volume. I already know that I can, I can get the derivative of volume with respect to R and then stick it equal to 0.05. Okay, so let's just see how that shakes out. Okay. All right, so do, I'm doing the derivative of V. Okay, and the, the variable I'm working with on the other side is r, so, so I'm going to do 3 times 4 thirds pi r, and I have to subtract 1 from the exponent, so r squared. Okay, so dv dr equals, well, I can, so 4 pi r squared. Okay, am I the only one that thinks that the derivative of V of volume with respect to R equaling the surface area is cool? I'm sorry, I just think that's cool. Okay, sorry, a little aside here. Okay, now what I want, oh, this is totally jacked up. Oh, man, this is bad. I'm so sorry. And, and there's no way for me to stop and edit just this part. So I do need to back up just a minute because I have a major typo here and it's really bad. And I'm sorry. The change in volume with respect to volume is the 5%, is the 0.05. dv over v is 0.05, not dv over uh, r or DV, dr or whatever I had there. Okay, so that was that's a, that's a biggie, and I apologize for that. Uh, Please fix that. I'm going to just take a second to make a big stink out of this. Okay, so the change in volume with respect to volume is 5%. And, and I know this is new enough that it's unlikely that you caught that. Okay, so what that means is if I'm going to get dv, D, or dv over v, I need to start out by having dv equals. So this guy right here... I need to multiply both sides by dr. Okay, I don't, I don't really like that where I just stuck that, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, all right, so here we go. Sorry about that. And so dv dr equals 4 pi r squared. I'm going to multiply both sides by dr. So dv equals. And then to get the V, and you saw me do this a minute ago with the circle on the bottom, 
what I'm going to do is divide by V. So I'm going to divide both sides by V. It's just on the right side, I'm not going to write it like that. On the right side, I'm going to write 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, I know some of you are saying to yourself, oh, dang, it's a fraction inside of a fraction. Come on, put on your big boy pants or big girl pants, as it were, and we'll just take care of it. Okay? All right, so dv over v. I'm just going to clear, simplify this a little bit. Okay, equals. Now, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 3 to get this, and there are probably other ways to do this, but this is fine. And I'm a little reluctant to do too much in one step, but I know some of you are going to anyway, and that and that's fine. Really, it's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to divide out uh, the 12 divided by 4 is 3. Pi divided by pi is 1, so that's no big deal. Now, r squared divided by r cubed puts an r on the bottom, and I have this dr on the top. Now, this is looking fairly straightforward now, and I'm rather excited about it. Okay, can I just pop back up to the top for a second? Okay, remember that our goal is to find the relative uh, number for, for radius, the relative change in radius as a percent. And so that's dr over r. Well, here's dr over r. Well, in order to find that, I need dv over v. And remember, this is the thing I made a big stink out of that I biffed on. That's 0.05. Okay, let me pop that there. So 0 0.05 equals 3 times what I want to know. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So dr over r equals point zero one and then lots of sixes. Okay, so I'll just write this up here. So that would be 1.6 repeating percent. And so in other words, we need to measure the radius within 1.6% of its correct value in order to measure the volume or calculate the volume from that number within 5% of its value. Okay, Just a, a speedy recap. We were given dv over v as a number. Our goal was dr over r that's what we wanted to know. So what we did was we, we started with the volume equation, we did the derivative, and then worked it down to dv equals. And then all we did was go back and divide by the volume again. Okay? And, and then solve for whatever it was. Okay, now this really becomes an exercise in symbols. Uh, it's really, really important that you are careful in following things like dr over r and dv over v much like I biffed. Okay, I'm out of practice too. Okay, all right, well, I think I need to stop it here, and uh, I, I would love for you to uh, take a peek in the book, and there are examples in the book that are similar to the ones we just worked at and it worked on, and again, we're in section 4.5, uh, talking about linearization and stuff, and uh, there's there are good examples in there, like example uh, 8, example 9, example 10, 11, 12, uh, even 13. Those are all decent examples on stuff relating to applications of differentials. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that for, at this for now, and thanks for watching, and we will, I'm sure, be doing some of these in class. Bye-bye.